Welcome to Serial Tech. My name is Heath Fields, Product Manager, and in this brief video, I'll walk you through some of the many advantages of Serial Tech's real-time hardware, NVMe, and PCIe configuration archiving. The challenge of NVMe is that NVMe is PCIe, simply written to or read from specific address ranges. These address ranges are determined during device configuration, which takes place just after each device is powered on. Without knowing the exact location and the specific purpose of these address ranges, it is impossible to distinguish NVMe from the underlying PCIe. How then to make this distinction? The most common method is to include the device configuration information in the trace and then once the trace is saved off, to pass the trace to a software program that pulls the NVMe device configuration information from the beginning of the trace and uses that information to reconstruct the NVMe throughout the rest of the trace. Now there are some issues with this method, which I'll describe now. First off, configuration must be captured in each and every trace. Well, that implies that startup has to be in every trace. And that means that before each and every trace, you must power cycle every single device in your test setup. This is a tremendous loss of time for the developer. Next, uh, you can't filter. Now, to be precise, you can filter, but by filtering, the developer runs the risk of removing from the trace the exact uh, configuration information needed to reconstruct the NVMe. Um, therefore, the filtering is highly discouraged. Because of these first two, um, being forced to capture startup and not being able to filter, the amount of buffer space left over to capture the NVMe events that are relevant uh, is very little. Now, there's also a delay associated, of course, with uh, saving off the trace initially and then waiting for that second pass for software to reconstruct the NVMe. So there's yet more time lost there. Um, there can be no hot swapping. Uh, again, to be fair, you can hot swap, but after losing so much buffer to startup, not being able to filter, uh, there's just no guarantee that by the time uh, you physically hot swap devices on your bus, uh, that you haven't begun to overwrite your buffer, that you haven't begun to lose the uh, NVMe information that you need in order to construct the NVMe in your saved trace. Um, finally, this architecture um, leaves no way to support native NVMe filtering or triggering. Uh, you'll always be forced to work with the underlying PCIe to get at the NVMe. So again, given all of these negatives, it becomes clear that the post-capture method of decoding NVMe has some serious limitations. Um, how else can this be done then? And can these limitations be overcome? The answer is to use hardware rather than software to capture the NVMe device configuration information and update it in real time. Using this method, uh, we have a very different picture of these challenges. First off, uh, must we capture startup in every trace? The answer is no. There's no power cycling. There's no need for startup. The only thing that is required is that the analyzer be on, not capturing, just on, when the device under test is turned on. That way the hardware captures the NVMe device configuration information and has it available and updated in real time to then use to uh, construct the NVMe in whatever trace you happen to capture. Can we filter? Absolutely. The uh, hardware archive is independent of the rest of the analyzer, independent of the buffer. So you can filter, you can trigger, you can do whatever you want and not have to worry about whether or not you'll be able to decode the NVMe afterwards. Now, um, you may filter out lots of the NVMe, but the NVMe that remains will be decoded accurately. Is buffer space reduced? Well, obviously the answer is no. Um, because we don't have to capture startup and because you can filter, you can use 
uh, serial text NVMe analyzer, just as you would a SAS SATA or PCIe analyzer, uh, capturing just those events that are most important to you. Uh, is there a delay waiting for software to make a second pass throughout the trace to construct the NVMe? Absolutely not. Uh, using our real-time hardware archive, the NVMe is rendered just as the PCIe is on the first pass. It's available to the user as soon as possible. Do we support hot swapping? Absolutely. Uh, not only do we support hot swapping, but multiple hot swaps can be performed in a single trace. Again, the hardware is tracking this, and uh, you can actually perform different hot swaps and then start capturing your trace. Or if you need to see the hot swap events in your trace, you can start hot swapping after you've started capture. Either way, the decodes for your specific devices will all be present in the hardware archive and will all be, therefore, uh, decoded correctly in your trace. Um, finally, is there support for native filtering and triggering? The answer is yes. Serial Tech is the first and only to provide native NVMe filtering, and that is out in our latest beta. Um, and we will have native NVMe triggering available um, by the end of the year, hopefully in another few weeks. So yes, our architecture allows Serial Tech to accurately filter and trigger on native NVMe commands, not the base PCIe, the actual NVMe. And so here is a summary of the comparison between uh, post-capture NVMe decoding using software and real-time NVMe decoding using hardware. Um, it's no contest. Uh, only real-time NVMe decoding allows you to capture a trace without being forced to capture startup. Real-time NVMe decoding allows you to filter whatever you want and capture uh, only the traffic that's relevant to you. There's no need to wait for a second pass for software to construct the NVMe. Hot swapping is supported. And finally, uh, native NVMe filtering is supported and is currently here with native NVMe triggering coming soon. So as you can see, there is no contest between the uh, post-capture method and the real-time method. Uh, Serial Tech has a serious and substantial advantage in NVMe decoding using the real-time hardware archiving. So we appreciate your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at heath at serialtech.com.